another edition of the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. Oh my gosh, we have a wonderful show here for you today, my viewers. Um, we have here Miss Camille Richardson and her sister Lakila Richardson. You know what? They're just doing what God has placed in their hearts. And so when we come back, we're going to talk with Camille and Lakila. And I hope that you are able to take their stories and just learn from it. So we'll be right back. All right, so welcome once again to the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. We have Lakila Richardson, who is the co-founder and the executive director of Blind Girl Vision. And then we also have our founder here, Ms. Camille Richardson. So Camille and Lakila, welcome to the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> show. We're excited. Is it yes, I'm excited to have you guys here. You know, um, when I first heard about Camille and Blind, uh, Blind Girl Vision was uh, someone referred me to you mm -hmm. and I went on your website and I, and I, I fell in love, literally, I fell in love with the video that you had and what you were doing. I just thought that it was amazing. Well, thank you. You are so welcome. So my question to you, to both of you is, how did you get started with both of this? Well, I got started. It's just an idea that literally popped into my head. I was okay. laying in bed one night and I was watching TV mm -hmm. and they were talking about um, YouTube. And I was like, you know what? What can I do to show people about my life? You know, mm -hmm. so I decided I'll have a YouTube channel and I'll create a web series. It was literally just like that. Like wow. it popped in my head about six months ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I wow. remember Camille called me and she's mm -hmm. like, you know, Kilo people are always asking me about, you know, how I'm so able to be so fashionable and ask me about my accessories <laughs> yes, and uh, yes. maybe I should do some web blogging about uh -huh. it so it literally it literally went from there and we have a connection with Bob Robinson okay um, who is the founder of the National Youth Chamber of Commerce and he also runs the Raleigh Business and Technology Center okay um, and we talked to him about our, our idea and he mm -hmm. connected us with Kimberly McLean at Creative Force Studios okay and from there it just kind of took off you wow. know just those co those couple of conversations right. you know, they believed in what we wanted to do with Blind Girl Vision Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. So, so let's talk about blind girl vision. Okay. Because when most people think of the name, um, they're thinking, okay, blind girl and then vision. So you're putting that all together. So how did that come about? Because I like it. So <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> well, really. Well, um, I was born blind. Mm -hmm. um, and the way I feel about it is, I God might not have given me sight, but He has blessed me with a vision okay. in my life and a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to put all of that together because, like I said, I'm blind, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yet I have vision. Yeah. And so, the, and I also want to be on television. <laughs> <laughs> it, it originally started off as Blind Girl TV, but yeah, we wanted something thing. that was all encompassing. No, so, it started so. off as it started off as Blind Girl video. Video, video. Yeah, video. Blind Girl okay. video. And then uh -huh. it evolved into Blind Girl Vision because we didn't want to limit ourselves yes. to one media. Yeah, form yeah. face to face is a part of what we do as mm -hmm. well motivational speaking so it kind of encompasses everything the and name I, and I love right. it and I, oh, I, I do you. because it's like you said I think it's just so much more than just her on TV I, right, I, I right, think right. that I think that your life and your story and your work is going to touch so many lives mm -hmm. and I honestly don't think that you guys have really realized what you have started and right. what is going to become Right. I think it's mm -hmm. I think it's really awesome. So, Lakila, what is your role in the life of Camille's? Well, the, my first role is I'm Camille's number one fan. Mm -hmm. We uh, you know, we've always been very close. Mm -hmm. We are extremely close in age. Uh, so, you know, I'm just I'm here to support her, her ideas, mm -hmm. what she wants to do, her dream. Um, you know, I've been able. I have a business background. I have an MBA. Mm -hmm. So, as far as the business plan and the business side for Blind Girl Vision, okay. I handle a lot of that. Um, okay. the, I've, I've kind of taken on taken on a lot of hats: um, mm -hmm. executive producer, event planner, mm -hmm. attorney. You know, I'm kind of <laughs> all of those different things. I, I play that role. I'm behind okay. the scenes. Camille's the star, and I'm the one that's kind of um, making sure that we're making the connections that we need to make, getting in front of the right people, okay. um, working on sponsorships, corporate sponsorships, things like that. Wow. So, wow. Um, I'm blessed to have had. Um, a career in corporate America that, mm -hmm. that actually lends itself very well okay. to what we're doing now and taking all those things now and applying it to our our vision and our okay. goal and our company. So it's been a very um, beautiful blend of skill okay. sets to be able to take my skills and work with Blind Girl Vision. Okay, and what were some of the things you were doing in corporate America that you, you, you see yourself 
working now for yourself and your vision. Right, exactly. Um, so I started out in finance. I okay. was a financial analyst for a while, mm -hmm. um, an industrial supply manager, um, operations manager. Um, right now I run a region of healthcare facilities. Okay. So, you know, Encompass is everything from, the, from contract negotiation mm -hmm. to people management, mm -hmm. um, project management, so those type of things, and as a, in addition to my MBA. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I did my MBA at Emory and have been able to just really take that bucket of skills yes. and apply them to blind girl vision. And I'm passionate about this. I, wow. I love what we do. I yes. love being in front of people and I love working with my sister. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, Camille, where do you see blind, ver blind girl vision going? I see this going global. Uh, we want this to be a global motivational movement. Okay. So that's why I decided to use a medium of the web and possibly mm -hmm. television, because this is a message that needs to be heard all over the world. Um, I feel like, um, you know, everyone faces obstacles, everyone has barriers in their life, mm -hmm. whether it be physical or whether it be, you know, anything, lack of funds, depression, fear, anything like that that's holding you back in your life. I want to encourage and inspire people of all ages and ethnicities that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, whatever obstacles there, you are bigger than that. You can go beyond that obstacle. So I see this being an international movement. Okay. Okay. So what are some of the obstacles that you've had to endure? One of the major, major obstacles I have mm -hmm. to endure every day is transportation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Trying to get wherever it is I need to go because, you know, like I said, I've been blind my whole life, but I'm always having to depend on others to get wherever it is I need to go. Okay. So I have to maneuver and find ways around that, which I do very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a master at it. <laughs> exactly. I okay. mean, that, for me, that's a major challenge. But okay. like I said, something that I have to overcome. Because to me, I've been blind, uh -huh. like I said, my whole entire life, so I've adapted to that. To mm -hmm. me, that's nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I live my life through that, and mm -hmm. that's also, like I said, what I want to share in my show, mm -hmm. is how I'm able to adapt and maneuver around in a sighted world. Well, and so it sounds to me that you have a streak of independence. Yes. Okay. <laughs> in a major way. Oh, major <laughs> way. So, so how do you um, exert your independence to your family or even to your business partners and let them know, hey, um, this is me. Um, like I said, um, example, picking out clothes. Everybody's okay. always asking me, how in the world do I choose my own clothes? I do have my own sense of style. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So I tell people what it is I'm looking for okay. when I go into the mall or wherever and they kind of show me something along those lines and I'm like, eh, no, I don't like this. Uh -huh. like. And it's something that you would equate with um, vision and also having a favorite color okay. is also how I asserted my independence because once again that's something that's very visual you would think that I have no calls for having a favorite color but when I was about three or four years old I decided that purple was going to be my favorite color okay <laughs> and so how did you how did you know the, the color of, of purple so to speak well to me I knew the color by the way it sounded purple sounds like fun it sounds vibrant it sounds bold oh. it sounds like let's step out there and have a good time okay let's live life uh -huh. so that's why I chose purple um, as my favorite color. Mm -hmm. And like I said, also just asserted my place in the world. Hey, I'm choosing this favorite color because I can. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I like that. I like that. That's awesome. It is. That it is, is wonderful. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, she, she's just so full of life. Exactly. I, I love that. It's just full of life. And, and, and I saw a video of you and her uh, shopping together. Mm -hmm. um, and I just thought, wow, that is wonderful. So do you guys do a lot of shopping and things together? Or? We yes. do a lot of things <laughs> okay. together. We, uh, we travel together. Camille and I, our very first trip to, uh -huh. out of the country was to Egypt. Okay. Wow. And it was such that was an amazing. We had yeah. such an amazing experience. And we navigated through the the uh, the pyramids together uh -huh. through the Sahara. I mean, we we're you cruise know, both, down the Nile, cruise down camels. the Nile. You wow. know, so side by side, we were on the same yeah. camel. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're still <laughs> on the front. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. together. So we yes. do, I mean, we do just about everything. We, we go okay. shopping, we go out to eat. Um, like I said, now that we have the business, mm -hmm. we are constantly on the phone, bouncing ideas mm -hmm. off one another. Um, Camille and I work as a team. Wow. And because we're so close, mm -hmm. a lot of times Camille will finish a sentence before I even mm -hmm. start it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're kind of always in sync that way. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's <laughs> wonderful. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll learn some more about Camille and Lakila. We'll be right back. So welcome back to the Phenomenal Woman in Christ show. Once again, we have Camille Richardson and Lakila Richardson, both of Blind Girl Vision. All right, so now both of you, you mentioned that you start, your show started off with doing video and, and just basically getting uh, Camille's story out there and her life story and all that stuff. So 
where do you what do you where is your your plan what what steps what are the next steps that you have right now okay. what's going on in blind girl vision well, like Lakila said earlier, we are working with Creative Forces Studio, Creative mm -hmm. Force Studios, to do marketing and production and whatnot. And we are shooting a pilot, a pilot currently, okay. um, which we plan to air in the fall. Okay. And that is extremely exciting for us. Um, also, I've um, been doing different fundraising events mm -hmm. to get assistance for the marketing and production side and the wardrobe and everything because right now we're paying for everything out of pocket and I know how that can be <laughs> <laughs> yes it's going to be yes. quite costly yes. <laughs> and uh -huh. one of the events that we did um, just this past Sunday was called Don't Peek Boutique okay. in Atlanta and what it was um, we did a blindfolded shopping experience um, we had oh. our event at a boutique called Studio Couture mm -hmm. And we had the customers blindfolded and they had guides who were actual stylists to mm -hmm. help them pick out clothing and they tried it on blindfolded and wow. they also took pictures and then they got to see their outfit. <laughs> and what that was to do was to bring awareness to um, blindness mm -hmm. and you know they got to experience 15 minutes of my 24-7. Wow. <laughs> right. That's right. wonderful. So in a lot of what the show will do, so in addition to following Camille through mm -hmm. her business as a massage therapist and a business owner, mm -hmm. um, it will also um, give people an opportunity to participate so we want to have more events like that featured on the show where okay. people are experiencing something they do every day mm -hmm. blindfolded. Okay. So whether it's dining or shopping or walking through a busy street area, mm -hmm. um, fishing, okay. um, we're linking up with someone to do a fishing experience as well. Okay. So um, it'll just kind of give people a chance to be out of their comfort zone and mm -hmm. really see what it's like and how challenging it, what Camille makes right. look very easy, easy. is yeah. every day. Okay. So, you know, as, as, a, as well as promote some of the other very positive things and impactful things that other people are doing. There are a lot okay. of phenomenal stories out there, mm -hmm. and we want the show to feature not only Camille's, but other people's as well. Other people's that's right. doing stuff. So ladies, I want to ask you, what are some of the things that you've had to experience and endure and to get where you are right here? You know, I would say, we, we've, one, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of people around us who believe in the project and have okay. helped us a lot. But we are doing this from mm -hmm. scratch without, mm -hmm. neither one of us are show producers mm -hmm. or, you know, have experience in the entertainment industry. So we're learning as we go. Okay. Um, we're learning what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, come, you need to come to the table with a very defined plan. Mm -hmm. And for us, this is evolving as we go along. Okay. Um, so a lot of it is just how do we connect with the right people, getting mm -hmm. the right sponsors on board, mm -hmm. um, making sure that our message resonates with other people sure it's a feel-good message mm -hmm. and people you know it makes people feel good but but when we're talking about building dollars and mm -hmm. to fund production and marketing we have to create uh, something that benefits both sides. Yes. So we're learning to do that as we as we go. Okay. Um, and and again, we've had a ton of support, so that's okay. been very helpful. But okay. um, you know, from one day to the next, we you know we don't know. You know, we're we're learning every day. Every day okay. is a learning process. Okay. Now, Camille, on the personal mm -hmm. side, would you I mean, have there been days where you just felt like, gosh, you know, do I really want to continue doing this? Why am I doing this? And he cares. <laughs> well, funny question. enough, that's mm -hmm. a very good question mm -hmm. because I do have those days sometimes still. Okay. I'm just like, am I sure I want to do this? Mm -hmm. Am I, you know, because honestly, I mean, I, I used to be in radio for three years. So I okay. was speaking behind a mic, right? Yeah. So I'm in the studio. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm about to be standing on a stage in front of a whole lot of people talking. I don't know. Like, why did I decide to do that? Yeah. That's a bad move. But then I'm like, you know what? This is a teaching, a learning experience for me as well because this is something that has been placed on me to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are seeing me grow mm -hmm. as I do Blind Girl Vision. Mm -hmm. They see that I'm not the most confident person at all times. You know, mm -hmm. they see that I'm not a perfect person, but... I'm persevering and yeah. I'm working through all of my fears as well. So I'm doing this on a very public platform. Yes. So yes, yes that is, I do have those days. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever feel sometimes, um, or have you ever asked yourself or asked God, you know, mm -hmm. why me? Why did I have to be born blind? No. No. Not at all. I've never had okay. a day like that. The only okay. time I really get frustrated with being blind is, mm -hmm. like I said, when I can't get where I want to go when I want to be there. That independent street. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's just like, I, if I could just get in my car yeah. and drive. <laughs> that's the, really, that's the yes. only time that mm -hmm. I feel frustrated. And also, well, dating as well. Now, sometimes that okay. does get frustrating okay. um, because people don't understand blindness. They think people who are blind just sit in the house and do absolutely nothing. Or okay. they feel like it might be overwhelming because they feel like they might have to take care of me, which is not the truth. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that can uh, dating also proposes poses a challenge sometimes. Okay, so so for the person that may not necessarily understand blindness, how would you explain blindness to us? 
to them? Well, to me, um, blindness is not, you know, it's not, I'm not the girl, I'm not a blind girl. Mm -hmm. I'm just a woman who happens to be blind, who still lives my life. I mean, my eyes may not function, but my mind functions. I still have health in my body and I still have the activity of my limbs. So I am still a whole person. And, you know, I have an inner vision. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, blindness is just a part of me. Mm -hmm. It's a a different way of doing things. Camille, when we were growing up, and I have to credit my parents for this, they did a very good job of really raising us the same, all the same. Camille had the same chores we had. Mm -hmm. Camille got in trouble just like we got in trouble. Mm -hmm. We played outside all day long. We adapted, though. And as kids, you don't really think about, well, you know, she's different. Mm -hmm. We just naturally Mm -hmm. adapted. We would adapt games so that Camille could play. And there would really be no difference. And I think that that is something that has allowed, by my parents not isolating her, Yes, um, she grew up with the same social norms that we have. So a lot of times, Camille will have a conversation with someone. My friends will meet her, and they won't even realize she's blind. Okay. Because she's laughing at what's mm-hmm. going on on TV, very aware, very perceptive. So, and I think that's that's the thing. It's not um, that Camille is so different. She just has to do some mm-hmm. things differently. Yeah, right. you know. You but, know what? Mm-hmm. What? Sorry, not to cut no, you off. Right. But one of the things she 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 mentioned at the beginning, she said, um, "I'm not a blind girl. I'm just a, a woman." Oh, with the right. vision. I love that. <laughs> I, I love that. I, I really do. I really do. So, I mean, that's. That, that's that's awesome. So so tell me about some of those times growing up. You guys have brothers and sisters. We have, we have another brother, brother. older brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And tell me about some of those days growing up. Some of those times. Well, one of the funny things, and uh-huh. we always tell this story. So um, Camille, you know, brothers and sisters fight, uh-huh. uh, and the my brother and I would fight for Camille. So my brother, <laughs> if my brother was in an argument with her, uh-huh. I would fight him, uh-huh. and then if I was in an argument with Camille, yeah. he would fight me. Uh-huh. So, you know, we just naturally, and it was, uh-huh. it was the most natural thing. Uh-huh. So right. weird when you look back uh-huh. on it. Uh-huh. But yeah, that was one of the things. And it was also, since my brother, he's older than mm-hmm. we are, it was always Lakeela and Camille and Jamo. So if it was time yeah. to wash dishes, it's either Jamo's turn uh-huh. or Lakeela and Camille. Time. Like we were just like a pair. We were yeah, in the like, same yes. bed until we were 13, you know, oh, so wow. 13 or 14. But, but yeah, no, we were just, you know, we just all, we all grew up very close. We're stair steps. Mm-hmm. And my brother, um, he's awesome. He's always been a protector over us. Yes. Nobody can do anything. Thing oh, to his sisters, yeah. we can fight each other, yeah. but, but nobody, nobody else can. better fight us. <laughs> <laughs> fight us. So that's we we wonderful. all grew up very close. Very that's close. wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So where is um, where is God in in your life? Um, for me, I feel like He is everywhere in my life. Okay. I feel like um, He's been ordering my steps all the way through this whole process. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said earlier, I started out doing radio, mm-hmm. and I um, I did that for three years, and then one day. It was just put on my heart to become a massage therapist. Now, I can't tell you why I did that because I'm not a massage. You know, I'm just like, what? But I felt like that whole time God was in this, in in all the details. Like he knew why he had me to become a massage therapist. He knew Mm -hmm. why he had me to start my own massage therapy practice. Mm -hmm. He was in all the details. He gave me the idea to do blind girl vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like he has worked everything out. He's still working through this. I mean, mm-hmm. he's provided me with so many opportunities, so an opportunity to be a part of this show, mm-hmm. an opportunity to network with all kinds of other people. So I feel like, you know, through him, all of this is possible Okay. through God. He's, he's making all of this happen for me. So I get up every mm-hmm. day and I'm very thankful for everyone in my life. You mm-hmm. know, I could have been born into a family who did isolate me, Yes. who yeah. did treat me like yeah. I was the blind girl and couldn't mm-hmm. do anything. So mm-hmm. he even had that worked out in the details. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So where have where where have you where have your your Christian walk um, gone to since all of this has started to come to pass? Truly, this has been a leap of faith. Okay. Um, I feel like through having my own businesses, I I feel like God has put all the tools in my life to be able to do this. Because if you had asked me four years ago, Mm -hmm. would I have had my own business? I would be like, no, Mm -hmm. I can't do this by myself. Mm -hmm. But he's shown me through all of this, that this is a faith walk. Mm -hmm. Um, He's shown me to just put all of my trust in him and let him lead me where he wants me to go. Exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and that's that's, that's, that's true. I mean, you know, all the resources yeah. have come and have been there. Um, you know, like I said, we are in the process mm-hmm. of raising funds right now and doing fundraisers, mm-hmm. but we've we've always had everything we needed. Yeah. You know, I mean, to every make time it happen. I, every time I feel like I'm going to stress out about finances, 
God always finds a way to keep my lights on. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps yeah. everything paid, you know. So yeah. I'm just like, there's no need in stressing because, you know, it's God's trust. We have to trust in right. Him mm-hmm. exactly. in all things. It's just mm-hmm. lean not to our own understanding, mm-hmm. but in all of our ways that we must acknowledge, acknowledge him. him in everything, in everything mm-hmm. that Absolutely. we do. In Absolutely. Everything. All right, so we're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we will hear some more about Lakila and Camille. We'll be right back. All right, Camille, I want to talk some more about your color purple. Okay. I, that has just been stuck in my mind, your, the color purple. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you talked about how it makes you feel. And I think, you know, people have the question of, well, you are someone without sight. Right. How do you know? How do you know what purple looks like? How do you know? You said it, it, it's how it makes you feel. Right. So explain that to us. Help us to understand what that means. <laughs> really, for me, it's about the essence of purple. Mm. Like I said, it, it's very bold. It makes me think of a rainbow, you know, the soft colors in there and a nice, you know, soft violet. I mean, you know, the, the soft colors. And then it makes me think of their serious purples in the world, the dark <laughs> ones, you know. <laughs> so it's, to me, it's all about capturing, you know, the vibrance of it you know Mm because i know you were telling me when you close your eyes you can see different colors but for me you know that's that's not the case so i have to envision it and feel purple Mm -hmm. inside Mm -hmm. you know of me and think of the the boldness and just the name alone, you know, to me, I, I love it because nothing rhymes with it. <laughs> it's its own color. Oh, never thought about it that. It's its own yes. thing, you know? Yes. There's it's no, independent. Right, right. It's, 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 like it's, it's, exactly. yes. it's independent. Wow, mm-hmm. wonderful. Well, tell me about um, where do you see your life touching other people's life with disabilities? Um, for me, I feel like I'm, I'm a voice. I want okay. to be that voice for others with disabilities because it doesn't matter, you know, like I said, whether you're blind, whether you're in a wheelchair or whatever. If people see blind girl vision and they see me out here just living my life like a normal individual, maybe when you encounter someone else who has a disability, you won't see them as quote unquote handicapped. Yes. You'll yes. see somebody mm-hmm. as, you know, you'll see them as an individual who's out there independent, living their own life. You won't see you know, their impairment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll see it. We, we, we shy away from the word disability mm-hmm. because okay. I don't look at my sister at all as disabled. You can see there's nothing yeah, about her that not, is yes. disabled. We talk right. about it being able differently. Okay. And you know, when other, we hope that other people, whatever their challenge may be, whether mm-hmm. it's a physical disability, self doubt or mm-hmm. fear or something like that, will look at her and say, you know what? I have, I have talents as mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. and I should be able to explore those. And mm-hmm. I want to try also. And, 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 People, Camille walks in the room without even saying anything mm-hmm. and inspires people. Mm-hmm. So when they hear her voice and they see her maneuver, we can only imagine how that will multiply. Yes. So um, this, that's why this is such an exciting venture yes. and, and, and venue mm-hmm. to participate mm-hmm. in because we know that it can, on a global platform, can affect so many people's lives positively. Yes. And so go ahead. That's what we want to do with it. So yeah. so okay. So so you're you're doing this and and and, and you're at Camille and, mm-hmm. and you're Lakila. So. That woman, that that young girl, that that man, that is sitting on their couch, they're looking at this show on the computer, on their you know on cable, wherever they are, and they may have I don't want to say disability, but they may have um, I don't know what they may have some barrier. A, 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 a barrier. Yes, yes, I love that word. Okay, yes. they may have a challenge or a mm-hmm. barrier. Right. They're looking at you and they're going to say, oh, my gosh, she did it. Right. I can do it. Absolutely. Right. What are some of the steps that you can give them that maybe you got started doing? I mean, what what is it that you can tell them that can that it can make them move from off of that couch, move from that fair? Well, for me, I just say you have to really literally just get up and move. Okay. Like literally get you up. You have to move. get up and make yeah. things happen for yourself. Now, a lot of it is putting yeah. it out there. I think a lot of people have you ever heard someone say, I had that idea after mm-hmm. something <laughs> like a, a yeah. invention or something yeah. came out and yeah. they're like, I had that idea. A lot of times I think we don't give ourselves the credit for um, how phenomenally our our brains Mm -hmm. work and the talents that we truly do possess. Sometimes it's just putting it out there and sharing it because that can become viral. And that's really what's happened with Blind Girl Vision. Camille called me literally in the middle of the night one night to talk to me about it. We talked about it. We shared it with a a couple other people and it kind of grew from there. That's how we ended up Mm -hmm. meeting you, getting on the show, sharing it with other people. Mm -hmm. So you have to put your your thoughts, your ideas, your dreams out there, however silly they might sound because it could develop into 
to something that could really create a livelihood for you. And you have to have an I can attitude. You can't go out there Seriously. with a with a negative feeling like I want to do this, but there's just no way. You're already starting off wrong. You have to go out there saying, "This is my idea. This is what I want to do, and I'm going to make it happen because <laughs> I can make it happen." Right. Camille and I are are two women with with our pool of resources and limited funding right now. We don't talk about problems. We talk about solutions. Mm -hmm. We identify, okay, this is the challenge that we have to we have to get over, and how do we get around it? How do mm -hmm. we work through it? Um, we always we we go through solution oriented and solution based thinking with whatever we are, we're working on at the moment. And uh, and we found a way through God and through our, our, our network and our resources to be able to uh, to surmount those challenges. So uh, it, that's, that's really a lot of it, the attitude and the perspective that you can. You know what, you are, you are a very strong individual, both of you. Right. But we've got, there are going to be people, women, men, mm -hmm. whomever, our, our show is primarily women. So you're mm -hmm. gonna have women that didn't have that um, encouraging, mm -hmm. strong, mm -hmm. familial relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. They're not. So they're gonna. They're gonna be people that have has has always felt like maybe they couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, that they weren't good enough. Good mm -hmm. enough. That their mm -hmm. challenge is a hindrance. That mm -hmm. they're gonna be people speaking into their life and have spoken into mm -hmm. their lives to let them feel that they are less than. Right. So where do you? What is it that you can tell them about that? Well, the first thing I would say is eliminate those negative factors. That energy absolutely impairs you. If okay. you've got people around you that are naysaying, you don't need that. You have to eliminate those factors from your life in order to, to be able to move forward okay. um, or limit them as mm -hmm. much as you can. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Mel? I was actually giving the same thing that you have to surround yourself with positive people. Okay. Um, and you also have to realize that you are strong enough. You are good enough. Sometimes you have to, you know, you have to give yourself a high five. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You have to believe and encourage yourself. yourself. And encur yes, you have to right. encourage yourself. And there, and there are a host of organizations and programs out there. Mm -hmm. um, most, most of us have access to the internet. If you don't, you can get to the library yeah. and they have, you know, free internet access. Mm -hmm. um, there are a host of, of free programs um, that will help fun business ventures and okay. dreams. Um, we've been, we've worked with um, NC Leap. Mm -hmm. They provide free legal advice for startup projects and startup okay. businesses. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't afford an attorney, that's a great option. Mm -hmm. um, the Raleigh Business and Technology Center with Bob Robinson, okay. they work with uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs all the time okay. and help provide grants and funding and things like that. So okay. if you have the idea and, and you have something that you want to do, there are resources out there. It's okay. just a matter of, of going out and see, seeking them. Like Camille said, the first thing to do is to move. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we are coming to the end of the show and Lakila and uh, Camille, I would love if you could tell our viewers uh, your website and how they can get in contact with you. Okay. Well, you can follow us on Twitter at Blind Girl Vision and we also have a Facebook page, which is Blind Girl Vision as well. Um, our website is blindgirlvision.net. Dot net. All right, ladies, thank you so much for being here. I truly enjoyed you being on the show. Thank, thank you, you so for much for having, having us. us. We You're appreciate welcome. the opportunity. Yes. You are awesome. Oh, and your walk you. in God is phenomenal and encouraging to us and so many other people. So thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you. Very thank much. you. All right, my viewers, I hope that you had a wonderful time listening to the life of the story of Lakila and Camille. And I pray that their, their stories will inspire you to move. <laughs> All right. So see you next time and have a wonderful and a blessed day. Thank you.